If you've been watching my videos, you know that I've been making videos about canoe camping and recently specifically about canoe types. Today I'm going to go through everything to consider when you are going to be purchasing a canoe or deciding which canoe you want to use for a specific trip. You could just pick any random canoe and use it for your purpose, but there are different canoes that are better fit for different experiences. First I'm going to talk about what you're going to be using your canoe for, then I'll talk a little bit about seating and some accessories. I'll touch on length of canoes, but I will focus a lot of my time on the material. I've made videos about the pros and cons of Kevlar and Royal X canoes, but I'm going to take in consideration a lot of different types of canoes and what they might be best suited for. At the end of the video, I'll tell you my preference for canoes for canoe camping because that's what I do most. When you're deciding on what canoe you're going to use, the first consideration is what are you going to be doing? What's your activity? What's your purpose? and your skill level a little bit. Are you going to be using your canoe for family camping and daily recreation? Are you going to be leaving your canoe at the lake? It's just gonna stay on shore, you're gonna use it for the day, but not carry it from lake to lake on a portage, not have to lift it and move it a lot. Are you going to be only using this canoe yourself or when you are present? Or are you going to be lending this canoe out to other people for them to use? Are you looking for a performance canoe that's going to go really fast? Are you looking for a canoe to use for month-long adventures? Or are you looking for something for just a couple days and the speed isn't as much of an issue? Finally, are you going to be using this canoe on easy, calm water like a lake? Or are you going to be using this canoe on rapids and rocky, rough riverbeds? Now as we move forward, I will take all of those questions into consideration when I talk about canoe types, materials, lengths, and other things. The accessories you're going to have on your canoe, add to your canoe, or buy with your canoe are going to be determined on, again, what you're going to be using your canoe for. If you're going to potentially be using your canoe with three or four people, you might want to have extra seats added to the center of your canoe. If you're going to be using your canoe to camp and you're going to be putting your canoe on your shoulders to walk it around on portages from one lake to to the next or one river to the next and you're going to want a canoe that has a yoke with pads on it there are different types of seats as well there's what's called a saddle seat and then there's your traditional woven or fabric seat you can get seat attachments that kind of pop up and you sit inside of it so you get a little bit of a backrest that's just kind of a short baby backrest that can be really nice on long trips a longer canoe is going to be great for having a lot of storage or extra people in your canoe. I have a 17 foot canoe, I can fit 3 people in it just fine. I have fit 4 people in it as well, though 4 people wouldn't all be able to paddle very easily. I've used a 15, 16, 17 foot canoe solo, but the shorter canoes I find a little bit easier. They do make canoes that are long, like 20 feet plus. Those would be great for a large family. I honestly don't know that I would ever really buy a canoe that big because I like to canoe camp and portage my canoe around on my shoulders. Even a 17 foot canoe is pretty long and the portages are often like twisty, turny, up and down and the longer the canoe the harder it is to keep the canoe up off the ground when you step up the back of the canoe likes to hit the ground and it's also hard to navigate when it's curvy. Consider these things when you're deciding on the length of canoe you want to buy. Also picture this canoe on your vehicle. <laughs> if you get a 23 foot canoe, that's big. <laughs> that's really big. Canoes come in a bunch of different materials, a bunch of different shapes, a bunch of different lengths, and a bunch of different styles. I'm gonna go through each canoe material type and talk about pros and cons real quick and then some good uses and some not so great uses for that canoe type. Of course, this is my opinion, this is my experience. I'm going to tell you things like aluminum canoes aren't that great for portaging, but there are people who portage aluminum canoes and stand by it because they're so heckin' durable. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I've learned along the way. I'm going to start with aluminum canoes. Aluminum canoe pros are, they are durable as heck. They are really hard to destroy. Also, another pro is that they're easy to repair, so if you do somehow end up with a hole in the bottom of your canoe, it's easy to patch and weld back together. A third pro is that you can leave your aluminum canoe in the snow, in the sun, anywhere. It's gonna be just fine. Finally, aluminum canoes are fully recyclable, good for the environment if you do decide to recycle them. Cons, they are noisy. If you are in the wilderness, they kind of they make noise as you move around, they make noise when they hit rocks as you're portaging. 
The second con is that they are heavy. They are heavy to portage. They're not fun to portage, to put up on your shoulders and carry from lake to lake. Another con is that they stick to rocks. So sometimes when you're canoeing out in a lake, there are rocks just under the surface of the water. If you hit a rock like that with an aluminum canoe, your canoe will like stick to the rock so you can't get off of it very easily. That can cause canoes to tip over. So something to think about. Aluminum canoes are great canoes to have at your cabin that you kind of leave at the shore or just up from shore and you pull into the water, canoe around and bring it back. If you don't have to carry it around a lot, don't have to transport it very often, it's great, especially I think for cabins because you don't have to put this canoe in a shed or anything, you can just set it in a nice spot outside and it'll be fine in the sun. Next I'm going to talk about Royal X canoes and T4MX. So T4MX and Royal X are two separate materials, but they're very similar in a lot of ways. Royal X is a material that was discontinued a few years ago. Now they have created a new similar kind of material called T4MX. Super similar in when you'd use them, when you wouldn't, and the pros and cons. So I'm just lumping them together. You can still find Royal X canoes for sale that are used and they can often be very affordable. So that's why I'm still including that in this discussion even though they aren't made anymore. T4MX and Royal X canoes are super durable as well. These canoes are a little bit flexible. It's known that if you run into a rock, a canoe that is made of Royal X will kind of bounce off the rock. It's not going to put a big dent in it typically, uh, like other canoe types. Typically the canoe will go right back to form. So people love the durability. So they're durable. The second pro is that they are flexible and return to shape. I kind of already talked about that. The third pro of this type of canoe is that they are affordable. These canoes can be found a little bit more affordably than other canoes. The fourth pro of Royal X and T4MX canoes is that they are easy to repair. The cons of these type of canoes are that they are heavier than a composite canoe and they are slow. Compared to lighter canoes, they move slowly in the water because they're a little bit heavier. These canoes are not as heavy as an aluminum canoe and I have portaged Royal X canoes in the Boundary Waters lots of times by myself ever since I was young. It's doable. They're just a little bit heavier than composite canoes. I would use a Royal X or a T4MX canoe for beach use at a cabin. I would use a Royal X and T4MX canoe for more of rapids or rocky bottomed areas. These canoes can be damaged in those situations, but they are known to be a little bit more durable in rough situations than a composite canoe. I think these canoes are super versatile. You can kind of use them anywhere. They're very popular. This is just the more durable, heavier version, and then the next canoes I'm going to talk about are the lighter but maybe not quite as durable canoes that are also very popular. The next type of canoe that I'm going to talk about is a composite canoe. A composite canoe has a lot of different types of canoes in that category. It's kind of a category of canoe and I'm just going to lump them together for this ease of it because a lot of them are similar with just small variations. A composite canoe is a canoe that is a type of fabric or woven material mixed with a resin. So this is a Kevlar canoe, a graphite canoe. Aramid canoes are in this category. Aramid is a lot like Kevlar as well. Actually, I believe Kevlar is a type of Aramid canoe. But there's a lot in this category. These canoes are basically layers, again, of that fabric and resin layered on top of each other. They can be very pretty if they don't have a gel coating that's like a color to cover it. You can see sometimes when you look at these canoes the layers or the woven material underneath the resin. Very pretty, kind of a cool concept. They can make these canoes to be thicker in the areas where they need to be thick and more durable and then thin with fewer layers of that fabric like woven material in areas where it can have a little bit more flex. Because of that these canoes are super light. The biggest pro of a composite canoe is they are typically very very light. Especially if you get an ultralight version of the canoe. These canoes are also typically stiff 
when you're paddling a canoe, you want the canoe to stay in its shape. You don't want the canoe to kind of like wiggle around a whole bunch because then when you're paddling, a lot of your energy is moving this canoe in weird shapes where if the canoe is stiff, then when you paddle, it just glides through the water. So composite canoes are nice and stiff that they glide through the water and they are very durable in some ways. Oftentimes composite canoes are advertised to be super durable, you know, they use Kevlar and these materials to make very very strong tough things, but I will say they're not quite as tough as a Royal X or T-Formix canoe in my experience though they are pretty durable. Another pro of a composite canoe is they're typically very fast due to being light and like I said, stiff. These canoes are easily cleaned and transported, again, because they're so light, it's easy to pick them up, clean them out, transport them, put them on your car, take them off your car, so that's a huge deal when we're talking about using a canoe that you're going to travel with. Some cons of these types of canoes are they can be a little bit more difficult to repair, they're not quite as durable as the other canoes that I've talked about so far. They need to be protected from UV, so you need to have a place to store them inside or away from the sun. These canoes are also more costly. These tend to be the higher end canoes because they are durable-ish and they are very light. So in the world of canoe camping, portaging, these are great canoes. I would recommend these canoes to canoeists who know what they're doing. I would not recommend this canoe to somebody who's a novice just starting out because it's so common to just jam your canoe into things it's tough when you're learning how to pick up your canoe and get used to that with a nice composite expensive Kevlar canoe because you're gonna kind of ding it up on things it's can be tough to set down and these canoes really show when you scratch them and ding them and it can also scrape the resin off and expose that fabric like woven material and that's really not good for the canoe so then you're gonna have to repair it and they're not super easy to repair so again these are great canoes if you know what you're doing. They're incredibly light, so if you have back issues and you want to do some portaging, this is a really good option for you. When we're talking about composite canoes, there are canoes that are skin coat, which like I said, those are the ones that you can see the woven material in the canoe when you look at it. It's basically just the sheets of woven material and the resin. And then there's gel coat canoes, which have a little bit of a layer outside of it that's uh, typically a colored material and that gel coat protects the canoe a little bit but it also makes it a little bit more heavy. So something to think about if you're going for a Kevlar or an Airmed canoe because you want it to be ultra light, that's something to think about. Maybe don't get the gel coat in that situation. I have a gel coat and I love mine though. This is the type of canoe that I have so clearly I like them. <laughs> Next I'm going to talk about cedar strip canoes. There are lots of different types of wooden canoes, and I'm not going to go through every type of wooden canoe because depending on what it's made of, it could be very different in strength, weight, durability. I'm going to talk specifically about cedar strip canoes because these are a type of wooden canoe that I see often and they are nice. Pros of cedar strip canoes are that they can be super, super light, depending on how you make it, but you can make them very light. They are also beautiful. So. Cedar strip canoes are super cool because they're just gorgeous. If you find a canoe that has a lot of really nice craftsmanship put into it, it can have designs. These are canoes that can be homemade so you can make your own canoe, but they do take a lot of time and effort and skill. Cons of cedar strip canoes are they require a lot of maintenance, they can be very expensive, and they're a little bit more easy to destroy. <laughs> I would not recommend one of these canoes in rocky areas, it would break my heart to see a cedar strip canoe beat up. But I did want to mention these because I do often see cedar strip canoes in the boundary waters and the ones that I see are typically very light and very pretty, so I wanted to mention them. Not all wooden canoes are light though, oftentimes wooden canoes are very 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 heavy. So it just depends on the type of canoe, how it's built. But if you do see a wooden canoe and somebody's picking up and portaging it really easily, probably a cedar strip canoe. I would use a cedar strip canoe for photo shoots, <laughs> for canoeing in the boundary waters if you know what you're doing. It's one of those things where if I actually put in the time to build my own cedar strip canoe, I would, it would be hard for me to use it because they're just so pretty. These are all things to think about when you're buying a canoe. Do you want it to be pretty? Do you want it to be light? Do you want it to be durable? Do you have a place to store it? Are you going to be bringing your whole family and do you need a big canoe or is it just going to be yourself and you can get a solo smaller canoe? 
Are you going to be portaging it and you need a nice yoke with some pads on it? Or are you going to be leaving it at the cabin and maybe an aluminum canoe would work just fine so you don't have to worry about the snow and sun ruining it? If you do have more questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try my best to answer and if you have any more advice for canoe buying or experience that you have that would aid somebody else in buying a canoe, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and we can all kind of learn from each other. If this was helpful for you, please subscribe. It means a lot to me.